this this play. Um, I think at its most simple level, it's about a community finding their soul, refining their soul. It's challenged, and they're breaking away, or you knowing what happens next in history. You know that this is the first salvo in this community of changing the ritual of race relations in this place. And I haven't mentioned race relations a lot in this play because I, be I believe that that's, you, can, you can see that as one aspect of it, but I think this is really about the entire community, how a community moves from infancy to childhood to adolescence into adulthood, how a community itself matures, um, the things that happen that challenge your moral essence and the courage to meet the challenge of something you're afraid of. Um, it always made me feel warm at the end and hopeful. I think in the times we live in now, which are both hopeful and terrifying, um, it's a good time to do a play like To Kill a Mockingbird again. Because I believe we're, we're starting to get challenged again morally and ethically. You know, the difference between right and wrong and moral and unjust. And the thing I adore about this country, it's it never ending attempt to find the moral ground, even at its worst. You know, it comes out to the light at the end of the tunnel instead of the onrushing train. The civil rights movement almost broke the back of the nation, but the nation came out of it a better country, a more mature country, and a country that believed in its laws, its constitution. You know, it was challenged. And withstood, and we're, I think we find ourselves there again. And I think a, a simple story, you know, and the best things August told me as a writer was to find the simplest way to tell your story, because you don't want your audience trying to figure it out. He said, "They got to figure it out, and why are you even putting it in front of them? <laughs> you don't want to give them like a guidebook to help them with it." He says, "No, you want to connect." And so he starts to find the simplest way to tell the story. Find the simplest way to make your point. And I believe watching this story through the eyes of a young woman, remembering herself as a child, leaving childhood fantasy behind and coming face to face with the moral choices she'll have to make later in life. I think it's very important to do this play now because it very simply puts that out there. You know, it's What's the old saying? All that evil needs to do to succeed is for a few good men to do nothing. You know, um, at this time of fear um, in the country, you know, we need the arts, and I believe theater in particular to reconnect us to what it is to be a human being, to what the human condition is. And there was a time in my life when my mother was dying. And this is something that someday I'm going to write down as a play because I, I, I thought it fascinating. There was a waiting room for the intensive care patients. 
And in this waiting room, you had a group of people who you would probably never find in the same place ever. You know, but we were all united by one common thing, the fear that a loved one was going to die. And it's something that, that, that I've carried with me since then. I've, I mean, I'm still radical, but I'm real radical, 70s, 80s. But the thing that I carry for me with that was when it really comes down to it, there ain't much difference between any of us. You know, that waiting room is the same for whoever walks in there. And that's dealing with life and death, and it don't get no more important than that. So if we're the same there, we're the same everywhere else. And I think what the arts are for, why theater is important in people's lives, is it reminds us of that. It reminds us that the things we think separate us are actually the things that bind us together. And To Kill a Mockingbird does it so beautifully. I mean, it's a beautiful story. And when you think of the things that happen inside of it, you know, a man tries to kill two kids, you know, an innocent man is found guilty of a rape he didn't commit. You go, well, now that's not exactly um, <laughs> light material or beautiful material. But the honesty with, with which Harper Lee goes back to it and the simplicity and the beauty of her writing, um, it overwhelms you. It overwhelms you. And everybody, I think, who's ever seen it has wanted to think that they could be Atticus at the end. That they could not only be a courageous lawyer who won't be shook off his moral stand, even if it means he has to give up some of his own tendencies. Well, if, we, if they're challenged now and the moral tendency is to do this, then this is what I do. And he's a great father. You know, who wouldn't want to be that kind of father? Um, so it's, it has a connection to everybody. And some parts of the stories people connect to differently. But in the end, at whole, the whole story we all connect to is basically the same way. And that's what I think its power is, the honesty of its emotion her intimate knowledge of the human condition, of people, and the fact that she likes people. You know, where she believes that our potential is that we will someday supersede all this. 